when you're growing almost any type of plant, there's really two types of care mistakes. First, you have kind of the beginner mistakes that are kind of obvious because there's tons of information around them. And then you have the silent killers, the ones that you are not able to figure out what is wrong with your plant. And those can be extremely tricky. For that reason is that I'm making this video today on the top five silent killers for Venus flytraps. I have been growing Venus flytraps and carnivorous plants for about three years and I like to share what I've learned plus I have done a little bit of research going through forums and reddit to see what people suggest when they see a, a sick plant or a plant that is looking unhealthy but the answer is nothing obvious but something a little bit more obscure. Make sure to stick until the end of the video because I'll be sharing a link to a Venus flytrap care guide and a Venus flytrap care sheet that is downloadable for free. Now let's get it started with the first one. The first silent killer for Venus flytraps is root rot. As you might know, Venus flytraps love humid environments. They need to be watered pretty often. But sometimes uh, people take this to the extreme and they actually end up floating the plant and putting tons of water as if it were almost an aquatic plant. And this can actually be very harmful for Venus flytraps. And it can cause root rot, where bacteria starts eating at the roots and will weaken the plant until it kills it. The really bad thing about root rot is that it is really a silent killer because you cannot even notice that your plant has root rot. You just see that the plant is down, that the plant is kind of looking bad, but you cannot see the rotting part because the rotting part is in, in the roots that are underground. If you want to save your plant, it is possible, but you have to go through the process of repotting the plant and extracting all that uh, rotting part in the roots. A simple way to prevent root rot it's just to always keep an eye on the watering. Every time you water your Venus flytrap, go ahead and kind of fill the soil and make sure it is humid, but it is not damp. Also, using well-draining soil really helps prevent root rot. The next silent killer is actually mineral buildup. Minerals can start building up into the soil because of the water that you're using or because of the pot where you have planted your Venus flytrap. To avoid any type of mineral buildup, you want to make sure to use water with low mineral content or no mineral content and never employ pots such as clay pots or terracotta pots that end up leaching these minerals to the ground. The thing with Venus flytraps is that sometimes you're using water that is not completely pure, it has a little bit of minerals that won't kill the plant but could start building up slowly into the soil and maybe after a year if you haven't repotted the plant then there will be enough minerals in the soil so the plant will start to suffer. To prevent this, I recommend either go for pure water, so zero parts per million, and also every once in a while, especially if you're growing your Venus flytrap indoor, try to water your plant from the top. Watering it from the top will help kind of flush any, any minerals that are in the soil. It doesn't do a perfect job, but at least it helps. The next silent killer is actually pests. And this might not be as obvious because we always expect Venus flytraps to capture bugs, but not to be affected by pests. But in reality, aphids, mites, fungus gnats, and many others can end up affecting Venus flytraps. I won't give you a specific solution because each type of pest has their specific solution of how to resolve it, but what I would suggest is to uh, make sure to do all the symptoms if you see anything wrong with your Venus flytrap. Maybe you see spots in the leaves, maybe you see little bugs crawling around that are not really being eaten by the plant but are just overpopulating your, your pot. Just Google the symptoms and if you're still not able to figure out what's wrong with your plant, I suggest you to use the community. Go into forums, post a picture of your plant and more experienced growers will help you figure out what is wrong and maybe even give you specific suggestions of what they have done from personal experience. The next silent killer is actually stress. It's something that is not very obvious when thinking about plants, but it is an important care consideration. You know, fly traps, you know, like eating bugs and might close and open their traps, and that is extremely interesting. But they don't like to be constantly touched or constantly played with because they waste a lot of energy doing so. Sometimes when there is uh, small children or pets around, they tend to play with you know, fly flytraps and just start touching them, and that can actually end up harming them. And I say little kids, but in reality, when I have uh, friends coming into my home and they have never seen my plant before and then they, they notice them, the first thing they do is just start touching them. Um, I don't know what it's about Venus flytraps. I guess it's because they're carnivorous, just 
people are amazed with them. And uh, in reality, the best thing you can do is just let the plant, your plants be good plants, be alone, just water them, but don't be constantly touching them. They actually you know, get harmed by it. I don't think a stress will kill a plant directly, but that added into any current mistake can actually weaken it to the point that it could eventually die. Before we get into the last silent killer, which I think it is a very important one, I'd like to ask you if you can like this video, it will really help the channel and help me uh, bring this content to more and more people. And also, if you like carnivorous plant growing or just gardening in general, I think you'll really enjoy this channel and you can subscribe. All right, now get, let's get to the last silent killer. And this is dormancy. Not many people know that Venus flytraps must go dormant every winter. Dormancy is like a hibernation period for your Venus flytrap, where the plant has to be exposed to cold weather, it kind of goes to sleep, goes into a dormant stage for several months, it rests, and then in the spring it re-flourishes and then it starts growing stronger and stronger. The thing is that many people believe that Venus flytraps are actually trop tropical plants, which is not true, and they leave them in warm weathers year-round. Dormancy is a required process. Venus flytraps need the cold weather once a year, every year, because if they skip uh, two dormancies in a row, they end up dying. There are many ways that you can make your Venus flytrap go dormant, so you can keep your plant alive for many and many years. There is even methods if you live in an area where there is no cold at all. There's ways to place your Venus flytrap in the fridge for a few months so it can go through the dormancy period. And it will really pay off because as soon as Venus flytraps go out of dormancy, they start re-flourishing, they, they grow, they divide, they propagate, and it is really an essential process for them. If you're unfamiliar with dormancy, I have left a few links below that can help you get an idea of how the process works to some articles that I have written. And those are the five silent killers that I wanted to highlight today. Root rot, mineral buildup, pests, stress, and lack of dormancy. Those are the five big ones. And maybe I'm missing some, so please feel free to comment and let me know what I have missed or maybe anything that you would like to share with us. Thanks for watching.